Hi, my friends, and welcome back to Crypto Mining Insider. First of all, I want to give big heart likes and say thank you for all your thoughtful, warm, and supportive comments about my job, including all the likes and subscribe to my little channel. I'm very humbled. It means more to me than I could possibly express. It motivates me to keep working hard and deliver the best content I can. It's not easy being in front of the camera and trying to find the latest and greatest tools. You inspire me. You lift me up with your words. So please keep it up. Hopefully we can keep the momentum going and make some great improvements even going forward with mining. Once again, thank you very much. Some of the biggest stories in the financial world this week are inflation. Looking at Wall Street Journal, U.S. inflation hits 31-year high in October as consumer prices jump 6.2%. Marketwatch.com, good luck escaping inflation. The biggest contributors to the 31 year high include rent, gas, and groceries. I don't know about you, but when I see this news and these numbers, it's scary. The value of a dollar is decreasing. My money is losing value day over day. Even with all this scary inflationary news, being a GPU crypto miner, at least I find some comfort in knowing that crypto is supposed to be an inflationary hedge. Again, this is not financial advice. Please do your own research. When I look at sites like Coinbase for today, it is November 12th of 2021. I can see that Bitcoin performance is up 290%. As the dollar is losing value, Bitcoin is going up in value. And that at least gives me some comfort knowing at least I feel my choices are in the right direction, at least to try to protect my value. But what I find is even more impressive is when I turn to coins like Ethereum. It's showing me for that same one year period, it's up 900%. Wow, that's an incredible number. And that makes me think then, hmm, do I want to be holding money or hodling, known as a long-term hold on for dear life? Do I want to be holding some of my coins? Do I want to be using coins like Bitcoin or Ethereum? Maybe Polkadot, maybe Shiba, I don't know. At least I want to be able to have options. Wouldn't it be great if we could choose what coin we want to get paid from in NiceHash? Sure, we could get paid in NiceHash and Bitcoin and move it to an exchange and buy it, but that really doesn't make a lot of sense. See, unless I want to get paid in Bitcoin, because if I want to get paid in Bitcoin, then I really need to use a hash power broker like NiceHash because I can't mine Bitcoin effectively from my graphic cards. So in that case, NiceHash works great. However, if I want to mine a coin like Ethereum because I want to hodl or hold it for a long term, if that was my choice, it doesn't make a lot of sense for me to mine Ethereum in NiceHash to get paid in Bitcoin to transfer it to an exchange just to flip it, just to buy Ethereum again. It's kind of like, Many extra steps. Let me see. Mine Ethereum, get paid Bitcoin. Too. too many steps is too many fees. Plus, since NiceHash is a hash power broker, we're typically getting paid a significant amount less than if we were mining directly on a pool. And you can see these numbers frequently if you look at sites like whattomine.com. You can see that there's normally the Ethereum pool rate, and then you'll see there's the NiceHash for Ethereum. Sometimes there could be some substantial gap between the two. What if I told you you could just as easily be mining coins like Ethereum directly into your own wallet in Windows as you do with NiceHash? And you're getting the highest mining revenue possible whether you choose to sell or hodl the coins. Some people think that you need special equipment. Maybe you need Hive OS on Linux or some of the special tools. We can use Windows just fine, the same way NiceHash does. The thing that NiceHash gives us is, is that it pays us in Bitcoin and that may meet our needs. It kind of works like a remote control. It's just starting up the same miners that we can start ourselves. That's what today's video is about. It's about going beyond NiceHash and show you how easily you can set up a miner and mine a coin like Ethereum directly into your own wallet and getting paid the highest revenue potential possible. I will show you step by step in a few minutes how to download and configure a miner and have it mining coins like Ethereum and putting the revenue directly in your wallet, eliminating the middleman, no hash power broker, getting the highest profitability potential possible. If you're not intimately familiar with using and setting up and configuring a miner, this video will definitely help you. If you haven't already subscribed, smash down on that subscribe button. Are you ready to start Ethereum mining directly into your own wallet? Stick with me, let's get started. Let's open up the NB Miner GitHub page. I'm going to be putting a link down below for your convenience. We see we have NB Miner version 39.7 is the latest and it has some additional features now for LHR mode, for LHR cards, and I'm going to be discussing that shortly when we discuss how we configure the miner. For now, I just want to scroll down. I see assets, NB Miner 39.7 win.zip. I'm going to click this file and it's going to prompt me that it's going to open it up. I'm going to open the folder where it's stored and now it's stored in my downloads folder. That's perfect. Let me close the windows down. I have this zip file 
file and this is NB minor win.z at this point you may start receiving warnings or alerts from your antivirus software saying hey there's some suspicious software here so you may have to add an exclusion if you're using regular Windows Defender, I'm going to put also a link down below. It'll have like a little hell like medicine next to it. If you follow those steps, it'll tell you how to add an exception using Windows Defender. So I'm going to right click on the zip file we just downloaded, click extract all. It's going to propose a folder to me, which is the default in Windows. And that's it. It's unzipped. So now I have NB minor 39.7 in its own folder. So let me click into the folder and we see NB minor win. So I click into it. Now I open up the folder and I see there's a bunch of files in here. I see there's the MB minor. I see some information drivers. But towards the bottom, I see start beam, start conflux, start ergo, start Ethereum cache, ETC, start Ethereum, ETH, and even start Raven. So this miner is capable of mining multiple different algorithms or multiple coins. And they provide templates for us, which is very, very easy to use. Start ETH is the one we're interested in. Copy this file and just repaste it back into the directory. I'm just going to call this tardy this test. And now I have my own bash file. I'm going to edit that file. And once again, Windows will generally pop up with some warning. So yes, I want to be able to open it to edit the file, run it anyway. This is the batch file. So this whole file, this one line here is capable of starting up a miner, saying connect to this pooling server and send the revenue into this wallet. It's all here. It's pretty simple. It's in this one line. So let's break it down. We see NB minor dash A is the algorithm, ET hash for Ethereum, and dash O is pointing to a stratum server. A stratum server is a mining server. Stratum is really a pooling protocol. So it's how my miner on my computer is able to speak to maybe Ethermines pool or if it's flex pool. We use a stratum server to connect our miner to theirs to receive the necessary commands so it can do its mining job. And the only other item here that we care about is dash U. U is simply the wallet we want to receive our revenue in. Sometimes at the end, you'll see dot default. That's really just the name. So you want to usually change the name because if you have two or three of these, they can all be named dot default and it's hard to determine the difference. So let's just make a few simple changes. We're looking at Stratum. They're pointing to Asia 2 Ethermine. Well, I'm nowhere near Asia. So if I go to the ethermine.org, I'm going to be putting again the link below and I'm just going to click on start mining. It says how to connect. So choose the mining server, Asia, Europe, USA East. Ah, I'm USA East. I'm just going to copy that address. And I'm also going to just look, the main stratum port is 4444. Okay, easy enough. I am going to take the stratum I replace it with USA ETH mine and they were using the alternate address. So I just want the 4444. Let's save this. We just updated the stratum, so we're halfway done now. Now dash U, that's our wallet. I need to specify here a valid Ethereum wallet to receive in. I have my Coinbase wallet just for simplicity. Let me highlight the wallet that they showed here. I'm going to grab my Coinbase wallet. And I just replaced it with the name of the wallet. I'm just going to call this Rig1. It's easy enough. That's it, we're done. And now we are going to run start ETH on our test file. I'm going to open up MSI now. I have my overclocks are set. I have two cards in this computer, so just applying some basic overclocks so we get some decent numbers. But again, I'm recording on this computer at the same time I'm going to be mining it, so my hash rate will be lower for both cards. Let's start this batch file up and get this miner going. We have NB miner version 39.7. It's showing me in green the 3090 as well as the 3080 Ti. You see login succeeded and it's connecting to ethermine.org. It sees device one is RTX 3080 Ti. So it's applying LHR technology to it. It's automatically trying to use some algorithms to get us even higher hash rate on the LHR card. My first status message here, I even have my first share accepted. So I am successfully mining ethereum on a pool and i'm sending the money back to my coinbase wallet let this run for a little bit and i want to get some accepted shares on the other card as well while we're waiting for some accepted shares let me just give a little bit of a quick overview when you see this status message here it's going to have an id and these ids corresponding to the graphic cards we're going to need that later on when we start splitting up the cards and miners we also see the hash rate the accepted shares the rejected invalid shares what is the power that is the wattage that the graphic card is telling the miner we're using core temperature memory temperature than core clock or the general memory clock and the other number i really care about is the efficiency how efficient is it how much wattage am i using to mine how much hash rate so you want to have lower water to get higher hash rate. You get higher efficiency. You're making higher revenue doing that. One thing I really like about the MB miner is beneath the miner status message, you see a blue line here. This is actually communicating with the stratum server, the pooling server. Well, right now, the pooling server is saying 119 mega hash is what it's seeing over 10 minutes. 
and how much it's seeing over four hours or even 24 hours. So this is just some indicator, at least we're receiving and we're communicating with the Shadow server. And over time, these values will build up and they should be ideally equal to or higher than what we're seeing on the hash rate. So at least we know we're getting the correct hash rate showing on the pool because we get paid on the accepted shares. So I'm going to let this run for a little bit and we're going to come back and look at some of the metrics shortly. So I have some accepted shares on both graphic cards, the 3090 and the 3080 Ti. I have 30 and 32. So I have like 62 accepted shares. Shares. But how do I monitor this outside of just watching the miner screen? We know that we can see some indicate from the blue line below telling you the pool is reporting, but that takes a while till it usually gets accurate. There's other tools we have. So if I go back to my NB miner folder that we originally downloaded, if you notice within here, there's actually an internet shortcut, open web monitor, open this file. I have a monitor. So that's right. NB miner will actually post a local web server and it's only private to our own computer. It tells me I'm connected, how long I'm connected, the algorithm, the wallet address, which is the user, the pool I'm connected to. This is all the same information that we have in the status. So this is another way to look at the data. It's just another view of it, as well as it gives some indicators to of the pool statistics. But when I want to see how it looks at the pool, I'm just going to go back to ethermine.org where we got our stratum server before. You see there's a mining address. I'm just going to paste my wallet I use because that's my identifier. And it tells me, okay, I have one worker. Oh, look, I even have a little bit of an unpaid balance. I've made 49 cents in USD. I'm currently showing 131 is my current hash rate, 77 average, and how much is reported. This will normally increase over time as you're feeding accepted shares to the server. They'll give you more work. You know, you'll slowly increase until you get the full hash rate within the server. And you can see there's charts here showing you the progress of it. So this is a big step forward. And we see I have rig one is the name after we put after the wallet dot, we put rig one. So this tells us what is the reported hash rate, current, valid shares, stale, et cetera. And when it was last seen, this is awesome. We're making money already, but I'm not gonna get that payout yet. So let's go to payouts. In the payouts, it shows what has started mining about an hour ago. What is my daily earnings remaining to reach threshold? What? I have 0.999989 Ethereum. It wants me to get almost like whatever the price of Ethereum is, say $4,700 before I get paid out. It's too high. For my purpose, although this is configurable, different pools will have different payout thresholds. So I can just go into update threshold. You'll see this Ethereum if you're on mainnet or if there's L2, which is polygonomatic. For simplicity, let's just say Ethereum mainnet. I'm gonna go into gas prices here. If I wanted to change it, I would put in like 0 0.01 because I want to only be paid in 0 0.01 Ethereum, which is approximately $47, $48. And that's the gas prices. So if there's transaction fees, different pools have transaction fees, you'd specify what is your limit that you want willing to pay for it. And then the last part is, is that since this is a public web address, anybody can get to this. You guys can even go and look up this information too. If once you have the wallet address, you can go see how it's performing. For security reasons, you have to put in your IP address. You can go to sites like what is my IP address? I'll put a link down below and that'll give you your IP4 as well as your IP6 IP address. And you'll be filling that value in here and that will let you adjust these settings. So you can put a lower threshold as well as set as what is your gas prices. So we covered how to download a miner, install it and configure it. When we started running it, notice we didn't specify any devices. So what did it do? Any of the graphic cards, which it could mine with, it's going to pull them in and start running them. So my computer, I have the 3090 and the 3080 Ti. It's going to run them both because we didn't tell it any specific devices we wanted to run. So when I look at the screen, I see ID zero is associated with the 3090 and ID one is associated with the 3080 Ti. Let's say I just wanted to do some overclock testing and I just wanted to worry about the 3080 Ti. So that has my ID of zero. Let's go back to our file. Let's edit it. The very beginning of the screen after the NB miner, put a dash D there and put one because one was the device ID for that 3080. Let's save it, close it, and let's run it again. This time when it starts up, you're gonna notice the 3090 is red because it's not included in this mining session. We only specified to use the second device and it's gonna be running with these LHR parameters. If I want to do some other overclocking or tests, maybe I want to even adjust and change around these LHR mode settings. And this is a great way I do my overclock settings. If I'm using NiceHash, I don't normally just start and stop the miners within NiceHash. That takes forever to go and set the custom algorithm parameters or settings. It's much easier in here. If I want to come in, let's close this miner and edit this file. Same we just put a device in there. I'm just going to put dash LHR 
I'm gonna start a little bit more aggressive. I'm gonna value of 75 this time. Close it, save it, restart. You see it's passing in the value, but this time notice using LHR mode one and LHR at value of 75. So see how quickly I could just change the minor. If I want to change it to 74 or some other value. This is a much faster way to stop and start minors repetitively when you're trying to find overclocks. Because once you start hitting LHR locks, you don't want to continue with the mining session. You want to make your adjustments on the overclocks and then you want to come back and restart the mining session. In this video, we've covered how to download, install, and configure a miner manually taking full control over the miner. We've configured it to mine on the Ethermine mining pool, mining Ethereum directly into our own wallet. We've showed how to monitor the miner locally, as well as even on the pooling server, and configure the various payout thresholds. I've really enjoyed sharing this video with you. If you've enjoyed this journey, please give me a big thumbs up like, smash down on that subscribe button if you haven't already. And until next time, we'll see you on the next video. Happy mining.